So we're going to look at integrals in the form of cumulative change. Cumulative, uh, whatever, cumulative change. And what I mean by that is that you guys looked before at the area underneath the curve by drawing dumb rectangles. Okay. And this is, of course, not the best way to find the area. And that's a simple way of saying it. People don't like calling area, but it's a good way for us to start. To find the area between, let's say, 1 and 4, I can add up 1, 2, 3 rectangles. Now, for the same graph, if I wanted to be a little more accurate, I could draw even more rectangles. If I want it to be more accurate, I draw even more rectangles. But no matter how many rectangles I draw, it's never going to be exactly perfect until I have literally an infinite set of rectangles so that every little tiny spot is taken up by a rectangle. Now, how many rectangles would that be? Would that be 100? Would that be 1,000? And as I mentioned before, infinite means pretty much unmeasurable. Now, do you really want to do the work for that? The answer is no, of course not. Who wants to do that? So the trick is this. When you want to find the area, we take it from call this 1 to 3, or when they say 1 to 4, we take the integral of our equation. And this equation here, I'm going to make it up. It's going to be negative x um, minus, minus 3 squared plus, let's call it 4, where the vertex is 3 comma 4. Okay. I want to multiply this out just so we have the equation. It's negative x squared negative 3, negative 3 is negative 6, so plus 6x minus 9 plus 4 is negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. That's the equation to this equation. I think that's it. If I plug in, this is, oh, I should have done a different equation. Darn it. Oh, whatever, that's right. I think that's right. Okay, if I plug in uh, one, plug in one, it's gonna be negative one plus six minus five. It's Darn it, that's a zero. Darn it. And then if I plug in two, we end up with negative four plus 12 minus five. If I plug in three, it's going to be negative nine plus 18 minus five. And then if I plug in four, it's going to be negative 16 plus 24 minus 5. I should make the y higher, darn it. She actually wrote a different equation. Whatever. This goes to 3. This goes to 4. Wait, that's a 5, right? Yeah, 4. And then this should go back to three. Yep. Okay. So this value here should be a little lower. Zero, two, and three. It's going to be three, four, three. Nope. Sorry. Mm, I four three like that.
Okay, just fixing the graph a little bit. Okay. Now looking at the rectangles, that now they have adjusted it. My first rectangle, the height is zero. The second is three. The third is four. And if I wanted to add it up, this is one times three is three. One times four is four. This is approximately the area is seven, which we know is totally wrong. We're a little short at some spots. And we're a little bit over on others. So what we do is, so take the integral, meaning if I put this in as the integral, this is how we find the cumulative change using a um, definite integral. Definite meaning because we have a and b. We have a starting and stopping place. And here's what we want to look at. This is our f, which is like our height. And dx is a little bit of x, which is a width. So really what we're multiplying is by dx and f of x, which is negative x squared minus 6x minus 5. And that gives us little rectangles. Well. How thick are these rectangles? Do you know say dx is really small? Well, this s, we talked about it in one of my last videos, is that that's like the s for sum. So we're gonna sum up all my rectangles to give us our total area. So just take the integral. The integral for here isn't that hard. A is equal to the integral of one to four. Sorry, we already did integral. We're going to take the integral now. A is equal to power rule for negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. The integral is negative x cubed over 3 plus 6x squared over 2 minus 5x. Everyone okay with that integral? And then we're gonna draw a bar here. And the bar reminds me to go from negative, sorry, positive one to four. So the way we plug it in is we just plug in the top four, 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 let's do that. So we're gonna just um, plug in the four and the one. So the area is equal to negative um, four cubed is 64. Uh, divided by 3 plus 4 squared is 16 and 16 times 6 is 60 36 is 96 96 over 2 um, minus 5 times 4 is 20 that's the front and we always minus the back minus our b value f of b so we plug in our b value so one, one, one. But previously we did four, 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 four. That's how we got 64 over three, 60, 96 over two and negative 20. And we're gonna plug in our one. It's gonna give us negative uh, one over three plus one squared is one. So it'd be six over two minus five let's simplify some of these we can divide oops we can divide a is A is equal to negative uh, 3 goes into 64 um, 
negative, oh, we can simplify this some of the stuff. Over here it's a plus 1 over 3 minus 3 minus 5. The 64 and the 1 3rd subtract out to become 60, negative 63. Negative 63 over 3 becomes negative 21. Uh, this becomes a 48. Minus 20 is positive 28. And we're going to minus the 5 over here, minus 5. Oh, the 5 and the 3 is a negative 8. Okay. So, um, nope, sorry, not negative 8. That's a plus 8. A plus 5. Plus 5. And that's a Turns out to be a plus 2. So we're 30 minus 21 is 9. Oops, our area is 9. And we said we have approximately 7. Um, if you want to Try a different method, we could have done trapezoidal. And so if we do trapezoids quickly, just on the side here. For a graph, we said our numbers were zero, uh, three, four, Three, right? So our first trapezoid would be from zero to three. Our second trapezoid would be from three to four. The third trapezoid would be from four to three. And it's all one half. And the base is one. One half the base is one. One half the base is one. So that would be three over two. This would be four plus uh, three plus four is seven. Seven over two, and seven over two. So our approximate our approximation would be fourteen, approximately seventeen over two, which is approximately you know eight point five. So we went from a really rough guess of seven using rectangles to a better guess of trapezoids, 8.5, and a accurate guess of, not accurate, but not guess, but a actual value of nine. So whenever you take the integral, that gives us our actual value because we're taking an infinitely many set of rectangles because dx, dx is a little bit of dx. So our bases are little tiny rectangles. So our general rule now is that if I want to find the integral, if I want to find, sorry, the area underneath the curve, and the curve is is not a straight line, but it is a curved shape, we can definitely just do this. Now, just another side note, another side example, is that what if I give you something super simple? Let's just draw a triangle. And this triangle is the equation is x between 0 and 4. What's the area of this triangle? Area is, for triangles, 1 half, base times height. And the base is 4, and the height, well, if x is 4, x is 4, y is also 4. Because that's this equation here. So the height is 4. 1 half, 4 times 4 is 16, and it'll be 8. Now again, we can see this a lot of different ways, just to prove this to you. Make sure you guys can wrap your geometric head around this. Is that if this was a square, this would be 4 times 4 would be 16. But since we only care about half, this, half of 16 is 8, which is what we get here. Now, if I want to use... Our calculus way of doing the same exact problem, the integral from 0 to 4, 
of our equation. So the idea is we're looking for the, what is our height and what is our base because we're just adding areas together. The height is given by the equation y is equal to x. So we could say f of x is equal to x. So that's my height. Right? If x is 1, our height's 1. If our x is 2, our height's 2. If our x is 3, our y is 3. And x is 4, our height is 4. So it's x. And we our base is a little bit of dx. So we're really multiplying little tiny rectangles next to each other. So we're doing little rectangles and infinitely many set of rectangles. And we're going to go counting from 0, going all the way to 4. Well, would this give us our island as rate? Integral of x is x to the 1 power, right? So n plus 1 over n plus 1. And we're going to plug in our definite integral from 0 to 4. The x squared over 2, plug in 0 to 4, plug in a 4. So b minus a, it's always f of b minus f of a, where b and a are our a and b values, our boundaries. Okay, in this case, 0 to 4 is our a and b value. So f of b is uh, 4, so we're going to plug in 4. So it's going to be 4 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, which is 16 over 2 minus 0 is 8. Same answer. Whoa. What if we do a another problem? Let's just do a rectangle. What if I told you y, the equation y is equal to 3? Or you can write this as f of x is equal to 3. It's 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. No matter what x is, y is still 3. And let's go from 0 to 4 again. So what is the area of the graph? f of x is equal to 3. What's the integral between 0 and 4? We're going to add up all the parts where the height is 3, which is not changing. It's a constant. And our dx is a little bit of x. So we're just drawing little tiny rectangles. And we're going to add them all up. Well, you could do this manually. You can just you know, draw a bunch of rectangles and add them all up. But since we know this is a rectangle, it's just area is equal to base times height, 4 times 3. And this is going to give us 12. Let's see if we get 12 here. The integral of 3 dx is just 3x. If you're not sure how to do that, it's a constant multiple. But what if I write this? 3x to 0 is the same as 3. And if I do n plus 1, plus 1, 0 plus 1, It will be 3 to the x to the 1 over 1, which is just 3x. We're gonna, we do a bar. We're going to plug in the 4 and the 2. And this is a reminder. We write it this way to remind us to don't forget to plug in the values. And that's going to be 3 of 4 minus 3 of 0, which gives us the 12 we wanted. Now... That's getting a little more complicated because we've been using geometric shapes, easy ones. But what if I ask you to do something a little more complicated now? Y is equal to x squared. We know as x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 9. Now, we could make a guess. What's the, let's do the integral. What's the area between 0 and 3 of the function dx? Well, what shape do you think I can draw that would, an easy shape that would cover the whole, whole, whole piece? Well, if I draw, let's draw it using, oh, let's use a highlighter. Use red. If I draw a triangle, won't that kind of cover this whole piece? But we get a lot of overlap here, right? A little, this whole section is a little extra. So would this be an over or underestimation? The 
area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The base is 3. The height is 3 squared. 3 times 3 is 9, right? That's going to be 9 up here. 9 is equal to 27 over 3. Oh, over, sorry, over 2. Well, no way. We're, are we going to get the same answer here? Well, remember, this is overestimation. What is the actual value? Now, we could have done a um, Riemann sum. We could have done a LRAM, a left-hand approximation. We could, could have drawn rectangles. Rectangles, rectangles. Using the leftmost value, left, left, left. Now, if, if, if I did that, do you think that would be over or under? That's completely under, right? So this rectangle here would be zero. This area would be one times one is one. And one times the next rectangle, one times, uh, we said two squared is four. Four is four. They add up. So this could be five. So the area is greater than five, right? At least because using my triangle, my over approximation, we said this was half of that is uh, 13.5. If this is an over approximation and this is under, where the actual uh, integral is actually someplace in between, isn't it? So let's actually do what we mentioned that we were going to do. Let's go ahead and take the integral of the function. 0 to 3. Are the heights constant? No, they're constantly changing. And it's not a nice geometric shape. But it's okay. The integral will break that into a, a trillion little tiny rectangles for us automatically. We just have to make sure we tell it the right height. And the height is defined by this function, x squared. The dx is just a little bit of dx. That's automatic. And we just have to now ask, hey, how do I take the integral of x squared? Hopefully you guys can see that's the power rule. So plus 1 over 2 plus 1. That's how we take the power rule. So it's going to be x cubed over 3, plug in 0 and 3. Now, once we take the integral, we plug in the 3, and then we minus the 0. 3 cubed over 3 plus um, 0 cubed over 3. And that'll be 27 over 3. Plus 0 is just 27 over 3, which is 9. And 9 is between these two possibilities, where this was an over, this is an under. And you can say 9 units squared because this is an area. And you can do this with, for any equation, any curve shape. Okay, um, hopefully you found this helpful, um, especially for problem number three. Now for problem number three, we are given our equation on top. So we know that this is not a, a constant, it's not a rectangle, it's not a triangle. So it's constantly changing. It's a curved surface. And we're going to ask to find out what's the area, what's the total area underneath this curve. In the previous examples, uh, we were asked to find it in different ways. We were asked to find the L-gram using rectangles, the left-hand approximation. We were asked to use a trapezoid, drawing trapezoids. And these are all covered in the review video. Now, how to find the exact value, though? Because all these, these two different ways are both approximations. They're just guesses. There's a lot of air in between. There's a lot of over, a lot of under. If you look at this rectangle here, we have a lot of overage, a lot of under guessing. This one here is probably going to be all under. So like what we mentioned before, we're going to go ahead and reset this up. This is an integral. We asked it. the interval here was negative 2 to 2. Negative two to do. Oops. Negative two to two. And the the height. Remember how we're doing height and the height and the base? That's gonna be negative x squared plus two x plus ten. That's my height. There are all the corresponding y values here. That's the height. And the base is a little bit of dx. 
Now, we've seen these, this integral a lot already, and that's just going to be power rule, nothing fancy. We separate it into addition, x squared, 2x, and 10. So we're going to write the integral is negative x n plus 1 over n plus 1. 2x squared over 2 plus 10x. We're going to plug in negative 2 to 2. Okay. And I'm running out of space a little bit, so I'm going to write it on the right side over here. Equal. Okay. Plug in the 2. It's going to be negative 8 over 3 plus plug in the 2 becomes 2. 2 is 4. 8 again over 2 this time plus 20. Minus parentheses, careful about that negative sign, we're going to subtract the back part. So negative, negative, negative is a positive uh, 8, because I have 4 negatives, over 3. Um, plus 2, 2 is 4, 8, over 2. And then we're going to say it's going to be minus 20. We multiply that out. Uh, the negatives, so that's negative, negative, and positive. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this. Um, we have a negative, negative become negative 16 over 3. Our negative 8 over 2 and positive 8 over 2 cancel out. And positive plus positive, positive 40. So we're left with, if I simplify this correctly, that's going to be 5 and 1 third. If we subtract that from 40, it's going to be 30, 4, and 2 thirds. Hopefully uh, you found that helpful. It's, you know what? It's not a whole number in this case, which is fine. It's a curved surface. Chances are it's probably not going to be a whole number. But this is pretty darn close to our, whoops, our approximation, right? Our trapezoid answer over here. Um, I lost it. But. Okay. Hopefully you found that helpful.